Hello fellow readers, my name is Pam Glover, also known as Miss Pam. I'm a mother, a wife, a grandmother, a teacher. I attended George Elementary School. I graduated from Ypsilanti High School. I also graduated from Eastern Michigan University and Washtenaw County Community College. Today we're going to read about Ella Fitzgerald, The Vocal Virtuosa, written by Andrea Davis Pickney and Brian Pickney. You may think I look like any other cat, but baby, I'm in a class all by myself. Scat Cat's my name, Scat Cat Monroe, a name I've earned. Got my name from knowing Ella. Ella Fitzgerald, the queen of scat. What's scat, you ask? Scat's the sound that don't hold back. Ella's sound, that was scat. Singing so supreme, music's velvet riven dream. But let me tell you Ella's story. Because you see, I was there from the get-go. I saw it, me, Scat Cat Monroe. I watched Ella go from the first lady of song to a vocal virtuosa, bar none. So sit back, listen up. Here's four tracks, cut to cut. Here's how Ella got her sound, got her silken silver style, got her lady, Ella Scat. Track one, Hoofin' in Harlem. The child's name was Ella. She was a big boned girl with dreams of becoming a dancer. But there weren't many dance schools in Yonkers, New York, the little city where Ella Fitzgerald and her mother, Tempe, lived. Ella had her heart set on pretty step in her way to fame, and she didn't need a dance school to do it. She taught herself to tap dance. Determination was her teacher. The sidewalk was her stage. Imagination was her spotlight. In time, Ella and her friends took to performing on street, on street corners. When Ella's neighbors saw her go, they, they told Ella to strut her shuffle in Harlem, to take her hoofin to New York, the big city, where dreams really do come true. That's when Harlem became Ella's stumping ground. On the night of November 21st, 1934, Ella entered a talent competition at the Apollo Theater. She was 17 and scrubbed clean down to her toe jam. But as soon as Ella saw the floodlights, her feet felled her. She stood front and center, knees knocking, teeth clacking, a wannabe with a stomach full of butterflies. And the girl was hardly dressed to impress. She wore work boots and hand-me-downs. Luckily, Ella was thinking on her toes. She refused to be booed back to Yonkers, so she started to sing. At first, her voice came quiet as a whisper, a measly little hiss, soft as a cricket. But when the band joined in, Ella rolled out a tune sweet enough to bake. She won the contest straight up, kicked her dance dreams to the curb, and pinned all her hopes on being a singer. I was there in the wings, watching it all, swinging to Ella's groove, wearing a grin as big and as proud as that Cheshire dude. Track two, Jammin' at Yale. Soon Ella had audiences eating out of her hand. She went on to win talent showcases all over Harlem. In 1935, the Harlem Opera House signed her as a featured singer. One night, Bardo Ali, the master of ceremonies for the Chick Webb Orchestra, saw Ella perform. That's when Bardo knew, knew that Chick needed Ella and that Ella needed Chick, that the two of them could make beautiful music together. But you see, Chick was a finicky bird, easy to ruffle, hard to please, a perfectionist. He was a jazz drummer who liked his music hot. Swing music was chick style, cut the rug rhythms that put the pulse on the party. He believed folks came to hear the instruments in his band, not some singer. 
Besides, he already had a singer for his orchestra, a guy named Charlie, Charlie Litton. What Chick didn't know was that Ella's voice was its own instrument. What Bardo took Ella to meet Chick. Chick agreed to give Ella a chance. He told her she could sing with his orchestra to a co at a college dance the next night at Yale University. The Ivy League, we're getting loose, don't always come easy. Chick told Ella that if she could work that college crowd, she could join his band. So Ella went to Yale with the purpose. And man, once Ella started to sing, she had them yallies jamming. That night, Chick welcomed Ella into his band. He took her under his wing, and the two of them flew to the Savoy Ballroom, the hippest dance spot in Harlem. Track 3, Stumpin' at the Savoy. The Chick Webb Orchestra had the regular gig at the Savoy night after night. They played to a house pack tighter than a train. The place was crammed full of folks who'd come to shake their tails to the orchestra sound. And honey, yours truly could shake with the best of them. You ever see a cat do the kangaroo, the Lindy Hop, the Susie Q? Those were the moves we danced at the Savoy. Danced while Ella belted from the bandstand. It was Chick's drumming that pulled people onto the dance floor. It was Ella singing that kept them there. Ella was not like other highfalutin singers. She never forgot where she came from. She remembered that her first work as a performer had been on the street. After Ella sang, she stepped down from the stage and danced with her fans. Ella let them know she was one of them. She showed them she could kangaroo too. She stumped at the Savoy like any other paying customer. Chick Webb was born with a beat in his bones. He was a master drummer, a musician, with a fix on jazz. Ella made it her business to learn all she could from Chick. She had talent, she had know-how. Chick showed Ella the right way to deliver a song. He taught her to shade the high notes, the light, the light and light the lows. To grab hold of a tune, to wrap her voice around each melody. When the sun set on Harlem and the cats, ki cats and kitties came out to play, it was Ella and Chick they were coming to see. When Ella and Chick performed together, they were grits and gravy. They brought out the best in each other. People called it chemistry. I called it musical magic. On May 11, 1937, the Chick Webb Orchestra took on the Benny Goodman Orchestra in the Savoy's Battle of the Bands. These contests were a Savoy tradition, and child, they were fierce. One band tried to outplay the other till the crowd, with their applause, named the winner. Benny Goodman was called the King of Swing. He played the clarinet, but King Benny didn't have Ella who would someday be known as the queen of her craft. And he didn't have Chick Webb, a royal percussionist. Benny set the contest in motion. His band started with a song called Peckin'. They made the play swing, no doubt. When Chick's band took their turn, Chick's drum solos were slamming. They backed up Ella's vocals, which gave new meaning to the word divine. The contest was closed from the get-go. Those musicians had a fever to the room. They had me sweating, the sheen off my fur, and scuffing my wingtip shoes. When Chick's band played Harlem Congo, the crowd got hotter and bootlegged Tabasco. That's cause Ella set Harlem Congo on fire. Her voice was quick fried rhythm with a brassy satin twist. She sizzled with Chick's cymbals. Busted loose with her bongos. She tamed the crowd while Chick played his timpani. And man, that ain't all. Ella worked the downbeat. She milked the backbeat. 
She sang till tomorrow wasn't ever going to come. 4,000 people filled the Savoy Ballroom that night. The contest lasted five hours. When it was done, everybody knew who was boss. Track 4. Carnegie Hall Scat. The Savoy was Ella's stepping stone. Thanks to nightly radio broadcast from the club, Ella was the name sitting pretty on everybody's lips. Ella took the Chick Webb Orchestra to new heights. She was the orchestra's star attraction. Nightclub owners had to wait in line to book the band. Some of them had never had a black singer perform at their clubs. Ella's popularity showed them that a true star has no color. It just shines. Ella could even put stardust in a ditty. In 1938, she and Al Feldman, a member of Chick's band, wrote the record, A Tisket, A Tasket. Man, when you're an alley cat like me, you hear all kinds of hopscotch chatter and jump rope jive. A tisket, a tasket, was it nothing more than a nursery rhyme, chanted a million times a day by kitties from Sugar Hill to Hollywood. But to hear Ella swing that brown and yellow basket was a whole nother thing. A tisket, a tasket, was a smash hit. In time, folks came to call the song a jitterbug spiritual. Ella didn't shy away from the kind of music, from any kind of music. When bebop became hotter than swing, jazz, and music lovers turned to Bird and Dizzy, Ella took her place on the bebop bandwagon. Bebop was jazz on the wild side. It was syncopation, locomation. Fast smack down, low down, down, down. It was slam bamming and the jitter tip. It was ham hock jabber, fever pitch. Dizzy Gillespie was the bebop's main man. He turned jazz on its head with his trumpet. He could blow notes into backflips, into flattered fists, into popcorn blips that flung free from his horn. Dizzy asked Ella to join his band. He invited Ella to give bebop a try, to improvise, to sing the ping pong rhythms that gave bebop its sound. Ella went along for Dizzy's ride. One night when the two of them started to jam, Ella made Bebop her own. For Ella, scat singing drove Bebop home. Ella used her voice in the same way Dizzy used the notes. He made with his horn, like a runaway leaf flying high on a breeze. Now when Ella performed, she let her lyrics go. She took her singing out to play. When Ella recorded how high the moon her scat swung to cloud nine and back. On September 29, 1947, Ella and Dizzy headlined a sold-out performance at Carnegie Hall. They brought Bebop to a high and mighty concert stage. But the show was far from uppity. It was fun. Dizzy's trumpet chirped, it zipped, it sputtered in double-time tempo. Ella's singing hung fast in Dizzy's rhythm. Dizzy bounced his bebop to Ella. Ella shot him back her scat. Man, those two were making up music in the moment. It was invention. It was frolic. It was cooler than cool. Ella put scat on the map when she and Dizzy threw down their skippity hop do dee dop. Both every soul in the place slipped into the jam. Ella soon had fans who loved all kinds of music. They came to call Ella by many names. The Queen of Scat, the First Lady of Song, a vocal virtuosa. Now I'm the keeper of Ella's flame, the teller of her tale, the Scat Cat. So kids, don't be fooled by phony felines. A cat by any other name ain't the same. Take it from me, Scat Cat Monroe. I was there with Ella from the get-go. All right, I hope you all enjoyed the book and the adventure. 
Bye. See you next time.